right, so we're going to talk about superposition. So far, we know a little bit about the anatomy of waves. Uh, we've learned a few different formulas for frequency, for period, as well as the actual wave formula, which was V equals lambda F. Hopefully, you've had some chance to, or a chance, to practice with some of that. Um, now, we're going to be taking a look at superposition. So, superposition is basically when two waves meet what's going what the overall resulting waveform is going to look like so if we have waves that cross over one another they're going to build on top of each other and if we think about what the term superposition actually means super is above right? and position we know what a position is so superposition is basically an above position so if one of these waves were to sit on top of the other wave it would get a little bit it would get larger if some of these waves were to cancel each other out they would get smaller overall so let me show you what I mean by that so with this first example here um, this would essentially be like one wave traveling this direction and my green wave over here traveling this direction and we're gonna see what happens when they collide with one another right so in order to do that we have to sort of look at this piece by piece piece by piece meaning let's look at right here what's gonna happen to this section of my wave and then we're going to go down to see what happens to this next section and this next section and we could split this up into a million different sections each one of these waves or we could keep it just however many sections there are here 20 or whatever it might be I haven't counted but we're going to be able to see what happens when these waves collide with one another so to begin with this wave doesn't really change right it hasn't collided with anything so we're going to plot it as is but when I get to this section right here, there's an overlap. And we want to see well, when, when these two waves overlap, what are they going to do? Well, to begin with, my green wave here, if we take a look at, again, just this one section here, so everything along this vertical line here, we want to see where are these individual waves at this point. So my green wave, whatever that wave may be, it might be a, you know, a, somebody hitting a, a snare drum, it could be somebody talking, it could be a musical instrument playing like a trumpet, whatever this wave's coming from doesn't matter. What matters is, to begin with, that green wave is right on the equilibrium, right, right at zero. And along that same line, my yellow wave is one, two, three points above the equilibrium right there. So in order to be able to figure out where we're going to have to, where we're going to have to plot our resulting wave, in relation to each one of these, we have to add it up. So this is at a, our green wave is at an equilibrium point of zero. Our yellow wave is three units above the equilibrium, so three plus zero would give me, of course, three. So that's where, what my new wave would look like when my green wave and yellow wave are combined just again at this one location here. So then we're gonna see what does the, the next portion of this new wave look like. And again, we'll have to look at it as just this one vertical line here. My green wave is one unit above the equilibrium. My yellow wave is like two and three quarter units above the equilibrium. You could round off to three to make it easier. So we just need to add those together and see what our resulting wave is. So green wave is one unit above the equilibrium. Yellow again, two and three quarters. So two and three quarters plus one gives me three and three quarters. So I just count up from the equilibrium one, two, three, and approximately three quarters would put me right there. Another way to look at this is if you see, we could use this yellow, this yellow wave here as our point of reference and say, let's see how much of this green wave is going to add on top of the yellow wave at each one of these locations. So at this location here, you could say, well, our yellow, our yellow wave is two and three quarter units above. Our green wave is one unit above. So what we could do is say, well, let's just take our, our one unit from this green wave and plop it on top of our, our yellow wave here. Either way, we get the same result in the end. And I know that's kind of difficult to see without me actually physically physically pointing at the screen here, unfortunately. So um, this next portion, again, I'm just going line by line by line and seeing how uh, what my resulting waveform is going to look like. So now I'm just looking at this next line right here. My green wave is two units above the equilibrium. Same with my yellow wave, both two units above. So I just have two units plus two units gives me a total of one, two, three, four units above the equilibrium. And then I would go on, I'd continue with this all the way, all the way throughout. So at this point, 
be there, right? One plus two and three quarters gives me three and three quarters. This next portion here, I've got three units above the equilibrium, zero units above the equilibrium, three plus zero gives me three. And here, for the rest of this, this wave pattern, there are no more waves interacting. So the green wave will be seen or heard, if it was a sound wave, as is. So those points would not change at these locations. So to trace my overall resulting wave pattern, I would look something like something like that. Sorry, my handwriting's not the best to begin with, let alone on a, uh, on a digital tablet here. So I apologize for that. But this would be considered, at this location only, constructive interference, because these waves are building up on top of one another. This first example, so this is more like our kind of notes, this first example here is all constructive interference. Uh, so we'll take a look at that right now. Let me flip over to my text tool so we can see that this is all considered constructive interference. There we go. So constructive interference happens when two waves build each other up. All right, and what I mean by that is if we take a look at just this first section right here, these waves are going to sit on top of one another but because they're both on the same side of the equilibrium. We're going to add them together. Both are in the positive portion of our graph. And we can think of this as a graph. Right? This location here along the equilibrium would be zero. Anything above that point would be in the positive region. Anything below zero would be in the negative region. So when I add these together, I end up with, at least for this first line right here, first section that we'll take a look at, zero units above the equilibrium for my green wave, zero units above the equilibrium for my yellow wave. So I'd end up right there. This next portion here, again, I'm just going line by line. I see that my green wave is a little over one unit above the equilibrium. My yellow wave appears to be just under three units above the equilibrium. So if we add those off, we'll round off to, for the sake of simplicity, and just say that one unit for my green wave plus three units for my yellow wave gives me a total of four units. Then when I go to my, my next line right here, I would see my yellow waves four units above, green waves two units above, four plus two gives me six units above the equilibrium. And I would continue on throughout that for that, a, that particular example, excuse me. So then when we get to the bottom, it's no different. Just because these waves are along the bottom of the equilibrium or the negative region, if we were to look at this as a graph, doesn't mean anything, anything differs from before. So here I'm building my waves up. Here I'm also building my waves up, but in the, in the negative direction. Right, if I were to count at this particular line here and see where my individual waves lie, let's see where the green wave is a little, little over one unit in the bottom direction or in the downwards direction, so that would be negative one. My yellow wave would be approximately negative three units from the equilibrium, so we'd still add them up. Negative three plus negative one gives me a total of negative four. And then for our next region here, negative 2 plus negative 4 gives me negative 6, and so on and so forth. And I would end up with a resulting wave that looks something like that. And this would continue on throughout the rest of this example in the same manner. You guys can probably draw it a little bit better than I can here. It's actually not terrible for me. Um, it's terrible for probably everybody else. Um, so that is constructive interference in a nutshell. It's a lot like building construction, right? When a building's being constructed, it's being built up and built up and built up until we get to our, our final resulting building. The same thing is happening here. Our waveforms are building each other up to get to this final resulting waveform. Now, destructive interference, on the other hand, is an example like the one down here. And it Excuse me there. And it is just like destruction or destroying something in, in real life. If you destroy something, let's say the building is torn down to make way for a, for a new building construction or something like that, as that building's being destroyed, it ends up getting smaller and smaller and smaller until, until nothing's left. And the same thing happens with destructive interference. Um, 
the rules for adding our ways together still hold true. The only difference is sometimes we're going to be adding uh, a negative to a positive. So in, in a way, we're going to end up with subtraction. But you can still think of it as addition. And let me show you what I mean by that. So this first portion right here, first reference point that we'll take a look at, so along, along that blue line, our green wave and our yellow wave are both at 0. So 0 plus 0 gives me a total of 0. So now here's where things get to be a little bit different. We can still use, again, we can still use addition to help us out here, but it's going to look slightly different than above. We're not going to be building up on top of one another. We're actually going to be tearing down. So at that location, I'm able to see that my green wave is one unit above the equilibrium. My yellow wave is one, two, three units below the equilibrium. So I end up with positive one unit above, negative, ooh, negative three units below. So positive one plus negative three gives me negative two. So I would end up plotting my resulting wave right at around negative two. We get to this next section here and I'm at positive 2, negative 4. So I'd be at exactly negative 2. Here we were just slightly under negative 2 because really this is slightly above 1. This is slightly above 2 here. But then the same thing would happen for this, this next reference point here. Slightly above 1, little, little below negative 3 here. So I'd plot my next point somewhere around there. When these waves cross on a node, Remember, there's no interaction at a, at a node, uh, or we're, we remain at a equilibrium of zero, or an intensity of zero. If this were sound, we'd measure that intensity in decibels. We could measure it in watts per meter squared, which is what a decibel really, really is. Um, but we can also think of it as just simply each one of these units is some sort of intensity value. You could think of it as just simply unit. Um, on my next area here, so let's go ahead and finish off what my resulting wave would look like. On this next area here, we'll do the same thing. And we can see once we have these two areas complete, the wave just repeats a couple of different times here. It repeats one more time plus another half a time over here. So same thing holds true. We're at approximately negative one for my green wave, a little more than or a little bit below three or a little bit more than two and three quarters ish, however you want to think of that. So we end up with approximately 3, negative 1, and a quarter or so, well, positive 3 minus 1 and a quarter, or positive 3 plus a negative 1 and a quarter, however you want to think of it, would put us at somewhere right around, somewhere right around here. The next value for this reference point is a lot easier because we fall right on lines. We're at positive 4, negative 2, so positive 4 plus a negative 2 would give me a positive 2. And then I would continue on. Looks like this point and this point are, are the same because of where my waves cross those particular reference points. And then by the time I get down here, my green wave and my yellow wave are both at 0, so 0 plus 0 gives me 0. So I would end up with a wave that looks something like that. And again, it would repeat over here. It would continue to repeat and would continue to repeat over here. And of course we could go line by line by line by line and see that we are approximately correct with this with this drawing. So that is destructive interference. Um, again, constructive interference, we basically have waves sitting on top of other waves. Destructive interference, it's a lot like if we had a hole and we had a mound of dirt. And what would end up happening, if I took this mound of dirt, representing something that sits on top of the equilibrium, and I pushed it into this hole, representing something that is a wave that is below the equilibrium point, I would end up with a flat surface in the end, that dirt sort of filling in that hole. And that's exactly what is happening at certain locations here. Some of this sort of mound of dirt sitting on top of the equilibrium, this portion here, ends up filling in part of the hole that's made underneath here. So now we essentially have a, a hole that is not as that is not as deep. We've partially filled it. And that's destructive interference. So constructive interference building up, destructive interference tearing apart or taking taking down.